Hello and welcome to today's Coffee with Craig, where we talk about all things firearms, firearms policy, politics, culture, media, you name it, we're talking about it right here on Coffee with Craig. So please take a moment, like and share the program so that your friends can know exactly what you're up to right about now. Also, please take a moment to... Uh, Oh, subscribe. That's what I was going to say. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. And remember to hit the notification button so that you can get the alerts as soon as we go live. Take a moment also. Please visit fpcgear.com. That's fpcgear.com. Cool place to go to find all sorts of pro 2A swag, new designs all the time. And know that every dollar that you spend goes right back into the fight for our right to keep and bear arms. So you can support the Second Amendment and you can look good doing it. That's fpcgear.com. All right. Now, we all know that... Uh, you know, getting 2A victories in these United States, and in particular in some states, uh, it, it's hard to do, right? It's when you know that the policymakers are working against you, and a lot of times the courts are working against you. It makes it very, very difficult sometimes to win some of these cases. And yet, and still, we do have some victories, in part because they have a very hard time getting past this whole, you know, Thou shalt not infringe part of the Constitution. But also when it comes to getting access to, uh, to other civil rights, like access to information, freedom of information, the First Amendment, private property, all of these various different rights uh, are you know, ignored oftentimes by government when it, because, well, guns. Because for some reason, because you want to support the Second Amendment, uh, it seems for some people to make all of your other rights kind of suspect. Well, in the state of New Jersey, and, and we all know that New Jersey uh, is, well, while the, while the people there may be freedom-loving, the politicians are not necessarily uh, fans of the Second Amendment, uh, there was a recent court decision that took place that is uh, quite huge for those who advocate on behalf of the Second Amendment there in the state of New Jersey. And to tell you a little bit more about it, we have our good friend from the New Jersey Second Amendment Society, Mr. Alexander, or Alejandro Rubia. What's up, man? Hey, thanks for having me back on. Excellent. It's all you know. It's always good to have you on, bro. So, uh, obviously, you guys got some good things happening there in New Jersey. Tell us a little bit about uh, about what's going down. Well, there was a big problem uh, ten years ago when we were suing police departments that they were violating New Jersey state statute and the laws in regard to how people can apply for firearms and uh, exercise their Second Amendment right. And as we were doing that, a lot of towns came back and said, "Oh, we're just following the guidebook." We're following the instructions that were given from the attorney general's office. We're in no violation. So when we asked for this information, sure enough, Governor Christie, the former governor of New Jersey, um, did an executive order to ban this information from being released and not telling us what the rules and the directions were on how police departments can investigate firearm applicants. So we ended up suing for that information. Five years after that lawsuit was started, the, we prevailed. We received about 80% of the guidebook from the New Jersey State Police. So five years ago, I'm sorry, about three years ago, we ended up winning a good portion of it. We were awarded single-handedly the largest legal payout, over $100,000 for any organization in New Jersey. But we didn't stop there. We wanted the incomplete manual because there was a lot of parts that were redacted. So we kept suing, we kept fighting. The state of New Jersey and the state police played every dirty trick that they could to stop us from getting this information. And about almost two weeks ago now, uh, we were in court uh, where the judge said, I'm going to side with the plaintiffs and I'm going to sign their order requesting that they get attachments A, B, and C, which was the rest of the manual. Uh, and we prevailed. So it was a major victory for us. And the state and the state police now have 30 days to turn over the information. Now, was that a, was that ruling from the bench? Or was so, that was, was that in there or just the written opinion? Well, it was motion after motion going back right. and forth between the defense and the plaintiffs and G2AS. And finally... Uh, about two weeks, almost two weeks ago, uh, the judge uh, requested a uh, oral arguments and uh, we went in. Our lawyer did a fantastic job and uh, the judge ruled from the bench that I'm going to I'm going to rule for the plaintiffs and uh, award their request and uh, sign the order. And we are going to expecting to get the paperwork. Uh, well, the judge gave him 30 days. Why it takes 30 days to put three attachments into an email and send it to us? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, we're eagerly waiting. We believe there's going to be a lot of good information there that we can then use to keep suing the local police departments for violating our Second Amendment. For example, for those listening from normal states, 
Uh, New Jersey, you have to go and apply and beg the police departments for a firearm app, uh, application and a permit. We've documented this with our, with our undercover videos. They go even further. They call your employer and start harassing your employer saying, you know, are there any problems at work that we should know about? Are there any issues with any employees? I mean, the way they monger this fear and they fear monger, any person's going to sit there and think, wow, John's going to come into work on Monday and shoot the place up. You know, but we don't know if that's lawful or that's unlawful. The, the law says one thing, but the manual can say something else. So once we get this information, it'll arm us even better on bringing further lawsuits uh, against New Jersey. Well, there, there's two re there's two things I want to point out. Number one is uh, ruling from the bench is pretty significant because that basically means that the information was just so overwhelming. It, it just seemed like it was an obvious thing. Uh, but the other thing, and this is the thing, you know, a lot of people, when, like when we win these sorts of lawsuits, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, great, that's wonderful. But so what? And it's like, you guys have to understand, access to information, how the government violates our rights is by making sure we don't have access to information as to how the process works or how the process is implemented, how they go about making their decisions and what those decisions are. And when we know, that's when we then can identify where they are breaking the law and violating individuals' rights. And they seem, once again, they seem to have absolutely no problem violating the rights of individuals when it comes to uh, their desire to express their Second Amendment rights. Exactly. And that's a, that's a very good point because as Second Amendment advocates and for people that just want to protect themselves and buy a gun for many reasons, sport, home defense, recreational and so forth, you know, we're being treated as second class citizens in New Jersey. Imagine the outrage if you went to the welfare department and said, why am I being, being denied my welfare check? And why are there delays with my welfare check? And they say, we can't tell you that it's part of our secret rules and you can't have access to it. Well, no, let, let's do it even better. What if you're saying, what if you're being denied the right to vote and no one will tell you what the rules are, what the process is and why you're being denied the right to vote? Exactly. Right. Once again, we're talking about a constitutionally enumerated right. And all you're saying is you have a process. And if you're going to violate, if you're going to restrict someone's constitutionally enumerated right, you better have a damn good reason why. And there better be a process that protects individuals rights. But when, when you don't tell us what the process is and you don't tell us what the reason is and all we know is you say, oh, yeah, trust us. Exactly. That's not constitutional. Exactly. And that's, you know what, normal America, this is coming to you. This is why you have to support organizations like NJ2AS and FPC, because we're behind enemy lines. You guys are based out of California. We're in New Jersey. We see the dirty tricks that they play. Our Senate president, our legislators are on record, are on video saying this has to be the national model. That's what they tell people in other states. That they're, they're boasting about how restrictive New Jersey's gun laws are, mm -hmm. and they want to make every other state the same way. Those of you who don't believe what Alexander is telling you right now, let me just tell you something. There are people in Oregon who didn't believe it. Look exactly. what they're dealing with. There are people in Washington State who didn't believe it. Now look at what they're dealing with. There are people in Nevada, and look at what they're dealing with. I'm telling you. You got to support organizations that are fighting on the front lines, whether it what in whatever state, because if it, if it if it's successful there, then people who want to take away your rights in other states are going to copy it. They're going to model it. And and if you think it ain't if you think it can't come to Arizona, if you think it can't come to Kentucky, if you think it can't come to Indiana, guess what? It's a coming. And as long as you ignore the fact that it's happening. Once again, and we're, once again, we're not, in this case, we're not just talking about anti-gun laws. We're talking about laws. We're talking about practices that are put in place by politicians to make sure that you don't have acts. You don't even know your rights are being violated. You, and, you, and if you do know your rights are being violated, you don't even know how because you don't have access to the fundamental information to be able to prove your case. That's exactly it. You know, look what's happening in Pennsylvania. And even more uh, disturbing was when I was at a, you know, the so-called gun safety day, and I think it was June, whatever, uh, the politician that was there, the New Jersey senator that was there was bragging about how she's been on the phone all week with the politicians in Virginia, guiding them 
on what laws they should pass, how to pass it, how to message this. I had this on video and it's not about going in there and saying, we're going to restrict your right. They're going to fool and they're going to trick most people like they have in New Jersey to make you want to feel safer. And that's, and that's exactly part of their messaging. They want to go disguise things of so-called common sense gun laws, you know, as public safety and so forth. And that's how they were fighting us in court. They kept telling the judge, well, your honor, this is about public safety. If we release this information, the criminals are going to now know how to buy guns in New Jersey. It's so absurd, these arguments. You know, none of these criminals are going to New Jersey of all places to want to try to buy a gun and go through the lawful process. We know that, you know that, but that's how they try to trick people and use the emotional argument to make you feel bad so you give up these rights. Don't let it happen in your state. No, do not let it happen in your state. Hey, how can folks find out more about the uh, the New Jersey Second Amendment Society? Follow the work that you're doing. They can follow us on nj2as.org. Also, the redacted version of this um, of the, the firearm manual that the state police provided us three years ago is available on our website on the news section. And then once we get the complete copy, we're going to put that up as well. We're also on all social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Fantastic. Alexander, thank you. Thank you for the work that you do. And thank you for coming on the program. Thanks for having me on. Ladies and gentlemen, New Jersey Second Amendment Foundation, Alexander Rubian. Well, folks, that's going to be it for today's Coffee with Craig. We very much appreciate you guys tuning in. We appreciate you liking and sharing our program, telling everybody you know about the Farms Policy Coalition. We are the home in the fight for civil rights. Got to use them or you're going to lose them. You guys take care. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.